Welcome back everybody to another breaking news from Planning Pants with the phenomenal, fantastic, delectable, delightful Linda Wright. Linda! Well, thank so you for that build up darling. Well you're most welcome. I hear size really does matter. I've been told for years it doesn't, so tell me about this. Look, I've been saying size matters for years, darling, and nobody's listening to me. But we've had this announcement from Rob the Builder Jenrick. Um, and we thought, do you know what? We'd better pop on and tell people. Well, absolutely. I mean, yesterday evening, there was a very quick, sneaky little press release leaked out talking about size of new homes, new houses. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, hmm, I use my permitted developments and prior approval processes. I love them, converting shops, offices uh, and other buildings. And I'm hoping Class E is going to open that up even further for us with dentists and doctor surgeries. But oh my goodness. Oh, you do know what you're doing, don't you, um, Andrew? No, but this is this is this is going to divide people. There's no two ways about it. As you know, an argument over size matters. You're, you're going to take the wind out of my sails here, aren't you? you know, I, I can am. see you're going to take the wind out of my sails. I am. Everybody, well, lots of developers out there are using the prior approval process. Well, basically, to make money. Um, but they are creating quite small, in, in fact, not everybody, but some developers are creating quite small um, units, residential units. And, and they're, uh, if you're Japanese, maybe not, but they are a bit too small, some of them. And as we have seen, government have come out and said, well, do you know what, we need to have adequate levels of natural light in these prior approval, you know, office to residential conversions, for example, there are others. So we've seen them do the adequate levels of natural light. Now what they're doing is they are targeting the sizes of these units. And I've, I've done planning applications. And the fact is, you're going to get a building that will accommodate, for example, maybe 50 flats, I don't know, maybe 30 flats, yeah. Just let's go with 50 to make the maths easier. And that if, it, well, I'm not gonna do maths on, on, on camera, no, no, no. So, um, if for example, you've got an office building and you, you're looking at it, you've got somebody to do the drawings or an architect and you can convert it to 50 flats. Um, but if you convert it to 60, self-contained flats what does that do to your bottom line obviously people are going to look at this you know most people most developers aren't in it for the good of their hearts most most developers are in it because it's a business it's their livelihood so from that point of view lots of quite small some might say substandard and there was that RICS report that came out that these prior approval, the permitted development rights, I don't call them permitted development rights because they're really not. The prior approval system was creating the slums of the future and that lots of the office buildings weren't fit for purpose and all of this. So what has happened now, as with the adequate levels of natural light, um, the announcement from Robert Jenrick is that each of the new homes in England, this only applies to England, that is going to be delivered. Now, the press release says through any permitted development right must meet the space standards. Now, it is just a press release. And unfortunately, we've not yet got the statutory instrument, the legislation that clarifies this. So this is just a heads up. It's to give you advance warning of this. As soon as the statutory instrument comes in, the legislation, and I like you know me, I like to see things written in somebody's blood. As soon as we've got it in black and white, we will bring it to you. But we're just letting you know. At the moment, now, as we've been discussing 
uh, Andrew. What does this refer to? Well, that's a great point because I'm sitting here and I'm looking at you terrified because I'm thinking I've just bought a shop. The upstairs on the shop is 34 square meters. So it's below national space standard. Yeah, yeah. and I'll, I'll share my screen in a minute because then everybody can see what the space standards really mean. So that, honestly, Andrew, that might be okay. So we, we don't need to go into panic mode yet. It's not clear to me whether um, this new space standards and, and new homes through the permitted development right, what that exactly means. Does it mean class G uh, of the uh, general permitted development order, which is what you're talking about? Does it mean that you can no longer, under permitted development rights, go and put two flats, up to two flats above a shop? Is that what it means? Because the class G does not require a prior approval application. It is permitted. You can go ahead and do it. So what I'm wondering, and I, honestly, I don't know because it's not been clarified. It's just a press release. Is that going to apply to this proper, full, true permitted development, as I call it? Or is it just referring to the prior approval procedure applications? And then from that, is it going to refer to the existing prior approval procedures, such as Class M, creating a residential unit above shops, Class N, those are sui generis and amusement arcade and casinos, Class O, and then you get Class Q, the agricultural buildings. These are still in place until the 31st of July 2021. Does it apply to those or does it only apply to the new prior approval and permitted development schemes, such as the upward extensions to create additional flats, the uh, demolition and rebuild to create new flats? Does it just apply to those? And at the moment, there's no clarity. We don't know. So until we know that, then this is just a preliminary heads up. Now, let me um, share my screen and, and then you can ask any questions that you've got. I'll share the screen. So this is, um, no, it's, it's also one of the tables, table 3.1, 3.2, they keep changing the number of it, that appears in the London plan. So this is your minimum space standards that have been done, have appeared in the London plan for a long time now. The nationally described space standards came in, into force in 2015, but they weren't mandatory. They were something that councils could choose to adopt if they wished. And a lot of councils didn't. Um, Manchester City Council, for example, said, um, uh, they were going to adopt the London plan table, which basically is the same as this. And they have been using that for several years now. So as you can see on there, again, this is slightly confusing because you can have, it's all about stories, one story, two story, three stories, as well as everything else. And that obviously goes up. But if you have a one bedroom unit, uh, and it talks about number of bed spaces. So if you've only got one bedroom, but you've got a large enough unit to have a double bed in that property, does it go from 37 with a shower room, 39 with a full bathroom? Does it go, if you can fit two people in there, does it go to 50 square meters? There's, there's not much clarity on that. So there is a possibility that some of these units, if you're making the larger, and clearly whenever there's a yardstick, everybody goes down to the yardstick, not up. So it may be that some of these one bedroom places will have to be either 39 square meters or 50 if they are big enough to have a double bed. And I can see some arguments occurring with some councils 
who have one view uh, and um, applicants who have another view. So what I'm looking at, Linda, then is I could make a one bed flat if I can find another three square metres and only have a shower room in my flat. And it's the nationally described London space standard that's the one that we should apply to to implement a class G. So we're, we're saying effectively class G might not be affected, but it's not clear. Class M and O, N and Q might also be affected, but it's Probably. not clear. But there's a high probability of those given the requirement for nat natural light. But I can see where the government and the planners are coming from with creating great space. But as a developer, you say it's about the profit. It's also about affordability because the price of homes and the price of rent is going up. And from my perspective, if I can create four units instead of three, and I can rent those for £700 a month instead of £1,000 a month, the cost per floor area, people can afford the rents. So it puts more disposable income into people's pockets to fuel the economy. And if the cost of some of the micro apartments, and there's lots of people developing micro apartments as a business strategy, all of a sudden have to stop making micro apartments, their business model, which is targeting first steppers onto the property ladder, they now can't afford that because there's a more floor space. Therefore, the cost per square foot has gone up. Yeah. All, all, I can see both sides of the argument. But... Well, absolutely valid points. Now, it begs the question, just putting my planning geek hat on, we've heard lots of arguments. Is the planning system fit for purpose? We know that the planning system of old has not really moved with the times with regard to HMOs. It just hasn't. It is still very much in the, oh, well, it's shared facilities. And we know that shared facilities have moved on. We've done all this co-living thing. And there simply isn't a, a class for this. So I'm thinking now, maybe do, do central government need to look at some sort of hybrid class where it's kind of co-living, but also slightly self-contained studio flats that will be in, in areas such as London, that will be very, very popular, will provide self-contained units of accommodation for people in a high quality environment, and but also can be controlled by means of either a prior approval or a full planning application. It, it just begs the question, has, and, and, and I think the answer is no, has the, the planning system, is it fit for purpose where different models of housing and a com residential accommodation are concerned? And I, I, I think that a, that question needs to be asked, but at the moment, all we've got is this bland announcement, uh, and you know, in, in the in the press release, it did say, um, whilst most developers deliver good homes and do the right thing, I'm tackling the minority of developers abusing the system by announcing that the new homes will have to meet space standards. So, um, you know, there's obviously some reasoning behind this, allegedly. Um, and units of residential are going to have to comply. Yeah. yeah, we've obviously squashed too many rooms into that barn we were trying to do. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying, Linda, and my business model, I built it on Rigsby, rising damp. <laughs> and Brilliant. you're telling me the market's moved on? But seriously, the, the market has moved on. And <laughs> the space standards, when they were set, was uh, when was it the 1960s or something uh, no no this these nationally described space standards was 2015 well then uh, okay well i mean as a modern lifestyle i i've just finished developing uh a, a bank converting that into a smaller commercial unit 
and three nice large flats. And I look at the space in there and it's copious. I mean, the, the flats are 64 square meters, which is a, a very decent sized flat. They are two person, but, um, or, or two bed, should I say? They're a very adequate size. And when you look at modern living, where everybody is sitting there with their mobile phone and their tablet, they've got rid of their CD collection, they've got rid of the bookshelf because they're reading eBooks, they're doing everything online and everything's disposable. We're keeping less clutter. Do we actually need such big spaces? Because with the big spaces, we then have to heat more space as well. I, 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 and yeah, you, you're quite right. Smaller units will be that much more sustainable. But it, it is also about affordability for for a, a lot of people. Um, and but then you have the contrary argument that so many people now are going to need additional space because we're all going to be working from home. So there you, you know, that there, as well. there, there's an argument for 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 both sides. And, and it's, a, it's a difficult one as to know uh, onto, into which camp you firmly plant yourself. Um, but obviously it will be um, a talking point for developers and I'm sure that they won't relish the fact that they've been uh, accused of abusing the system uh, by the Honourable Mr. Jenrick. Well, I, I'm just thinking from what I'm hearing from you, more people working from home means there's more offices which means there's more class O opportunities to convert. Only up until the 31st, up until of, July. 31st of July next year. That's right. And hopefully we'll be bringing you some breaking news when they yeah. announce what the new class E permitted development yeah. rights are. So if yeah. you haven't subscribed or shared this channel with your friends, please do so now. And we'd love to hear your comments about who's right, the developer or the planner, in terms of the space sizes that are needed. I think smaller units are better because they're more affordable for people to rent, more affordable to buy, and with the modern lifestyle of everything is on your tablet or your phone, we're keeping less clutter around us. But is Linda right? Linda, what's your case? You speak for yourself. I'm hanging on to my clutter. <laughs> well, it basically comes down to size matters and i've been saying this for years darling yes i, I know you keep telling me <laughs> and on that note it's right. been great to share this update with you all thank what you very much linda say? for such a fast analysis brilliant <laughs> as usual and i think we've teased out that there might be an opportunity with class g's that might not be caught with this but hopefully robert jenrick's not watching <laughs> well, hopefully we get something in black and white soon. Absolutely. Stay tuned. We'll bring you more. It's goodbye from me, Andrew. And it's goodbye from me, Linda. <laughs>